Hi everyone, good to see you all. It's been a while since my last video, well maybe a few weeks, but today I want to go back to basics. And that's because recently I've had a few people message me over on Instagram asking the same question. What plants would I recommend if you're looking to start a tropical, exotic or jungle themed border, or even a full on garden transformation? Easy plants, great for beginners, plants that don't need a huge amount of care, but definitely give a lot back. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. Today, I'm at Linden Nurseries. You might have seen my video tour from here last year. This is my local nursery, and it's fantastic to see so many exotic plants here. Paul is really pushing the boat out when it comes to unusual, exciting plants, and today I want to share some of those with you. What I want to do today is talk about jungle plants, and then in the next quick video, talk about the tropical plants I think are absolute must-haves. And then finally, if you're looking to grow an exotic garden, maybe a Mediterranean garden that's high impact but low maintenance, then I've got something for you as well. So it's a three-part video series here at Linden Nurseries. If I look like I'm sweating a little bit, that's because today's very windy, and when that sun comes out, yes, that orange globe in the sky, it's making an appearance, it's roasting in here. So let's get started. <music> I will try to show you some accessory, filler or companion plants, easy, affordable plants for each sort of planting scheme that will really help fill your garden out quickly. Or, as we're midway through the season, if you've got any gaps, these are great filling plants to really bring the whole look together. But let's get started with jungles. And Linden Nurseries here has got a fantastic range of exciting exotic plants, lush greens, towering plants. You've got to see some of these. But firstly, just quickly, as that sun's come out and just roasting my face again, I know I shouldn't complain. Jungle gardens, where do you start? What even is a jungle garden? Now, I know my channel is called George's Jungle Garden, but the reality is my garden and plant interests cover a wide range of different styles. And in my garden, as it's quite a long, narrow garden, it gives me different areas of exposure, light, and I can try different garden styles. But jungly, when I think of the word, I think of really tall plants, loads of lush greens, plants densely packed in together. It really wants to feel like a proper jungle atmosphere. And to do that, you need lots of reliable evergreen shrubs, lots of interesting ferns, shady plants, and also plants that are gonna absolutely tower over you. That's the way you really feel like you're inside a garden. So let's get started off with some of the staple plants I would use if I was starting a jungle garden. I'm gonna start off with a plant that I'm sure will be very well known to a lot of you, particularly if you watch my videos for a while. And that plant here is Fatsia japonica. Now, this is a plant I'm sure you'll have heard of. They're available in a wide range of places, but if you can help support this nursery, if you live in Lincolnshire or Yorkshire, I'm sure they'll really appreciate it. Now, they're a very affordable plant and very easy to grow as well. This one here, as you can see, 9.99. It's a good sized plant, and this is a plant that grows relatively quickly. Now, why would I recommend this plant first? First. Well, I suppose the main reason is just because it looks incredible. I think no matter how rare or unusual your plant tastes are, when you see a well-grown Fatsia japonica with these glossy large leaves, it really looks as exotic as anything else we can grow here in the UK. And I mean that. When you see one growing well, ideally with a bit of shade, quite moist soil, they look truly stunning. And this is a plant that grows relatively quickly and it soon becomes a good sized shrub, but they're very adaptable. In time, they'll grow on to create a large shrub, potentially even pushing a small tree, but that takes a lot of time. What they are is a shrub that you can use to create different effects in your garden. You can plant them on mass to create a really incredible shady courtyard, this beautiful green, replacing any kind of hard landscaping that you don't want to see. You can use them as a plant to complement other palms like Trichycarpus fortunii. They look incredible with that. Just create a sea of greens, or you can use them to create a canopy in your garden. Now that's really easy to do. When you're buying it, you can look for one like this that's multi-stemmed, plant it in your garden, let it grow. And what you can do is remove some of the lower leaves to really create a jungle canopy look. But likewise, if you want to prune it back hard, keep it small and enjoy those glossy young new leaves, you can absolutely do that as well. So they're a very adaptable plant and there's no winter worries either. This is a plant that at worst, you might see some of the new leaves can get just a bit bitten by the frost, but my advice for that is just leave them to it. The plant might look deformed for a few weeks, but new growth starts pushing through relatively quickly and it'll be green again by summer. So an incredibly easy plant, but an incredibly beautiful one as well. 
Now, with this video being aimed at beginners, I will have a few more interesting plants later, don't you worry about that. But I also wanted to discuss plants that you can get readily at most garden centers and nurseries. Obviously, the team here would prefer if you came here, but I want to show you some plants that most garden centers, even some large DIY chains, will keep in stock. So if you don't live in this part of the country, you should still be able to get hold of them readily easily. Now, the next plant I want to show you is another Fatsia, but this Fatsia is definitely something a little bit different. This is Fatsia polycarpa. You might see it sold as green fingers, and already you can probably see it looks like the same kind of plant as a Fatsia japonica, but with a bit of a twist. This one has got more deeply divided leaves and they're also more of a matte finish. So unlike the dark green glossy leaves of Japonica, this one is certainly something different, but it's equally easy to grow. And again, it prefers ideally a sheltered shady spot with relatively moist soil that doesn't completely dry out. But again, I think this is a plant that's great for creating that lush jungle look. And to me, if you really wanted to create a jungle garden, you want something that looks great all year round. It's not so much about the full on tropical summer display as a lot of tropical beds and borders are. A jungle garden wants to feel like a jungle even in the middle of winter. And that's what I tried to get with my own garden. I use plants like bamboos and the trachyapis palms with shrubs like fatsia. And that way you've got these beautiful green leaves all the way through the air. And again, no winter worries. So this is a plant that you can grow in a large container in a border or as part of a full on tropical jungle garden scheme and you can enjoy this beautiful plant without any worries. But yes, I know you're probably watching this video because you enjoy growing exciting, unusual plants. You want to create a beautiful jungle garden that's something that people won't have seen before. Well, to me, there is a Fatsia that I would choose over those other two. And it's this one here. This is Fatsia spider's web. And I think it's just a step above Fatsia japonica and Fatsia polycarpa. This one here has a beautiful white variegation around the leaves. They're just touched with this white color, but sometimes when the new leaves push through, particularly in a shady spot, they can be almost completely white. It really does look a beautiful sight. And again, this is a relatively affordable plant, £12.99 for this one there, which I think really is great value because this is a plant you can pretty much plant in your garden at any time of the year. Well, maybe when it's not completely frozen, but you can plant something like this and enjoy it almost doubling in size next year. And from that point then, it will keep on growing and growing well. These really are a beautiful shrub. And when you see them, those new white, almost translucent leaves unfolding, it really is an incredible sight. Now this one, as you might have guessed, with having white on the leaves, it does do better in a shady spot, but I don't see that as a downside. I see plants like this as being the perfect option. If you've got a shady courtyard, maybe a dark part of your garden, a border underneath some trees, this is a beautiful plant to really add some brightness and exotic foliage to the area. So if I was looking to start a jungle style garden on a complete budget, or maybe just have a container on a balcony, I think that Fatsia spider's web is a fantastic way to start it off. So you've got your Fatsia then, you've come to your local garden center or nursery, and there's a bewildering array of incredibly beautiful plants to buy. Every plant is screaming out, plant me, choose me for your border. Where do you go next? Well, there's actually a load of different plants you could grow in a jungle garden, but my next pick will be something that's a bit rare, but suddenly becoming more and more popular, and deservedly so. It's the Scheffler. So amongst all these incredibly well-kept, beautiful, exotic, and unusual plants. Here is the one I want to talk about. This is Scheffler Taiwaniana, and I'll just choose one out and put it over here so you can see it a bit better. So there we go, perched precariously on that bench there. This is a beautiful exotic foliage plant, and I think that is the general theme with exotic jungle gardens. You want to have as many different greens, different leaf shapes, beautiful plants climbing through to create a canopy as possible. Yes, flowers are great, and they're perfect if you want a more flamboyant tropical style garden, which I'll talk about very soon. But if you're in a jungle garden, I think it's all about beautiful, unusual shrubs like these. Now, Scheffler Taiwaniana, as you can see, it's got a few stems, this one here. It will grow quite tall. I generally think of them as, well, if you know the umbrella plants that we grow as house plants, these are very similar. These are the hardier versions that we can grow in our garden. They've got a beautiful, delicate, exotic look to them. 
And this is a shrub that will grow up quite quickly. It's not a rocket, but it still grows very well. My top tip then for Scheffler is firstly, make sure you choose a good plant in the first place. So as you can see this one here, it's a good strong plant, nice thick stems, it's got leaves all the way up, it looks healthy and green. And this is the kind of lush foliage you're gonna enjoy for years to come. But the second tip, and this is probably the most important one, is to maybe not plant something like this out straight away in your garden. Here we're in North Lincolnshire, and as we've experienced this past winter, cold spells can still happen. Even at the time of climate change, global warming, all of that, we can still and we may have more severe winter weather. And a plan like this, it's tough enough to cope with most mild or normal winters, but when there is an extended freeze, a hard frost, it might suffer. Now, I grow a lot of these in my garden here in North Lincolnshire, and what I would say is from this previous winter, small plants have struggled a bit. They've died back quite a bit. Larger plants that are maybe three, four foot tall, they've died back a little bit, but they've already started sprouting, pushing away, and they'll look as good as new, maybe even better than new, because there'll be more branches, even more leaves to enjoy. And then larger plants, completely untouched by the cold. And we had around minus seven, two weeks of pretty much full on freezing conditions. So it was definitely a test for them. Now, what I would recommend you do, if you're not sure how cold your garden gets, or if you've got any particular frost pockets or anything, is to plant this into a pot that's a little bit larger than this, maybe a 10 litre, and enjoy it as a potted plant for this first winter. And that way, if it does get cold, you can bring it into a cold greenhouse polytunnel. If you haven't got either of those, at least tuck it close in towards your house, maybe somewhere sheltered near your back door, and that way it's just protected from the worst of the cold. And then next spring, you can plant it out. And the amazing thing with these is just seeing the spring growth come through. You'll see these new leaves here push through, and the plant can grow a foot or even more in its first spring outside. It really is incredible to see. So with a little bit of care, a little bit of TLC in its first winter, if you can get this plant to maybe between two and three foot tall, it's a great time to then plant it out when it's gonna to be tougher and hardier in our UK winters. And like the fats here, this is a woodland style plant that prefers soil that's quite rich in organic matter. It prefers a little bit of shade, a good bit of shelter from strong winds, sun, and really freezing cold. And if you give it those, then it really thrives. And it's a plant that looks incredibly beautiful with very little effort. And like I said, this is a shrubby plant that actually winds up through your canopy. So if you want to create that authentic jungle vibe to your garden, you've got to have unusual stems, those plants that look like unusual jungle trees climbing up there you really want to have that sense of height to make yourself feel immersed in the garden and plants like this all adds the mystery and exotic vibe of your creation and next up then if you've seen any of my garden videos you'll know that it's going to be a palm this is a trachycapus fortunii fan palm and they've actually got loads outside but they're actually unloading a fresh delivery now all different sizes if you want an easy, stunning, exotic jungle garden plant to grow, a Trachycapus fortunii is the perfect start. These are incredibly tough plants. They grow really nicely. They will grow in a pot for a length of time. Plants like this haven't been in the pot forever. I would say choose a pot that's a good bit bigger if you plan to keep it in it a few years, and they will ultimately be happy in the ground. But like the other plants I've shown you, they're incredibly tough when it comes to winter conditions. Now, what I would recommend is, if you can choose somewhere out of the wind, it keeps the leaves a little bit more pristine. But this is a plant that grows relatively quickly, and once it's established, which can take, say, two to three years for a normal trachycarpus, they grow pretty rapidly, producing up to a foot of trunk a year and loads of these beautiful glossy leaves. So whilst this one here isn't potentially the finest example, these are a great investment plan, because if you put something like this in the ground now, in just a few years, maybe five years, you'll have a palm that's pushing five, six foot tall, and in 10 years time, you'll have a plant that towers over you, which is an absolute must for the jungle garden theme. So if you're looking at starting a lush jungle style garden, I would absolutely recommend those three plants. Trachyapas palms, beautiful exotics, great value for the money, and they're a plant that's gonna look even more incredible over time. Fat Japonica, a very reliable plant, easy to grow in both winter and summer, and a plant that has a beautiful lush look to it. And then you've got Scheffler Taiwaniana, something a little bit different that captures that beautiful houseplant look, but in your garden as well. And with a bit of TLC, they're a fantastic exotic evergreen plant that people might not have seen before. But if you want a few accessory plants, here's a few ideas for you. 
Climbers are an absolute must in a jungle garden. And to me, if you want something that combines the beautiful glossy green leaves to keep that jungle exotic theme going, but with an absolutely stunning scent, this whole greenhouse is filled by this. This is Traclospernum jasminoides. I'm also a big fan of Clematis armandii. That looks beautiful. But to me, if you've got a pergola or a seating area, or maybe just somewhere close to the house where you can enjoy the incredible scent, this one ticks all the boxes. But it's not just tall climbers that can add to the jungle look, it's also about the small plants as well. Plants that help soften hard landscaping and really create a beautiful informal garden. So if you go to any garden centre or nursery, there's plenty of foliage plants that could work really well in a jungle garden. But to me, one of the absolute must-haves, a plant that really ties in with that shady green look, it's ferns. They're very useful, they're great for those dark shady spots where not a lot of other plants grow, but I think they have such a lush look to them. Now, obviously in an ideal world, we'd all have a garden packed full of tree ferns, I was lucky enough to buy some of mine a good few years ago when they were a lot cheaper. Nowadays, a tree fern is a very big investment, but using ground ferns is a great way to capture the same look, these graceful fronds that look perfect in the sun there. You can have that look on a budget by growing a lot of varieties like these. So looking through here, one of my favorites, it has to be this one at the back here. This is a dryopteris, which doesn't want to come out for its moment in the glory. This is Dryopteris erythrosaura brilliance. And as you can see, £3.99. Great size to start off with. Some of the larger plants in this tray here, I'm gonna put this one back there because it doesn't fit very well. <laughs> Some of the larger plants over here are about 5 dollars 7 dollars there. So there's a lot of different sizes. But what I would say in my garden, one of the plants absolutely delivers that jungle look all the way through the year. It has to be the ferns. The small plants I put in as tiny little plugs a few years ago are now nicely sized plants, pushing a few feet tall in some cases, and they really do look stunning. Often in a jungle garden, it's not just the big specimen plants, but the overall look. And even diminutive ferns, they help really soften the edges. They can be planted at the base of taller plants, trees, and they help tie the whole garden together. And if you're looking for one absolute top tip for growing some of these incredible beauties like that other drought trees there, I would say buy them in multiples. Buy these plants in threes or any number that you want to, I suppose, really. And that way you can really tie your whole garden together. And whilst it can be a thing that you get into collecting different plants, which is absolutely fine, if you want a garden that really looks professionally planted, that has an absolutely outstanding jungle look to it, if you go for multiples and choose the same variety of fern and have it repeated through your garden, the look can be absolutely exquisite. And in fact, if you look at the plants that I bought here myself today, I've gone for a few more ferns. Great gap fillers in the shady jungle parts of my garden. These will look beautiful as you size up. So if you're looking to start your own jungle border, maybe a container garden or a full on jungle garden, then those are the plants I would recommend starting with. Just because you want to grow an exotic jungle garden doesn't mean the plants have to be difficult to look after. And if I was gonna start one today with nice and easy beginner plants, I would definitely go for the Fatsia, the Schefflera, the Trachycarpus. I would have a few choice climbs in there to really complete that jungle vibe. And then dotting around a few ferns, hostas, some low level plants to really help recreate your own lush jungle paradise. If you've got any suggestions yourself, plants that you think are absolute jungle must-haves, maybe some of the big grasses, maybe some more big leaves, plants that you can get readily at most garden centers and nurseries, then let me know in the comments below. But I hope this video has helped some of you out. A big thanks for watching, and a huge thanks to Linda Nurseries for letting me film here. And the next video in this quick series is all about tropical gardens. Big leaves, bright colors. There's a few plants in there you'll absolutely love. So I'll see you next time. You thought the vid had finished, didn't you? Well, here's a couple of bonus choices for you. How about these here? The 9.99 Coniogram emiensis. These are a beautiful fern. I mean, just look at that. Absolutely beautiful things. So yes, you can have deciduous ferns, you can have evergreen ones. Whichever you go for, they're a great choice for your garden. And one last plant I'll just finish on quickly because this absolutely deserves a mention. This is Fasicularia, a hardy bromeliad. I've done a video all about these. These are a beautiful filler plant for a jungle style garden. 
exotic hardy evergreens. These look similar to a grass. They're a lot tougher, but in summer, when they get larger, they have the most incredible flowers. Each rosette is a striking red color with an incredible blue flower right in the center. So if you want a companion plant, something to grow around the base of your trachycarpus or other shrubs, these are a great choice. Maybe somewhere a little bit sunnier, but a beautiful plant that definitely deserves to be planted more here in the UK. Right, that's actually it now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.